chairman, I think we've, 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 we've narrowed the definition of an IDP to only internally displaced people through political processes. In Samburu today, and in many parts of Pasquale Seria, there are people who are displaced every day, because I assume displacement means taking of properties and killing of people and leaving people as paupers. You go to those places where cattle are raped, children and women are suffering. But I want to ask the minister whether there is an extension of IDPs that are victims of cattle raids, because they suffer more particularly knowing where they come from as marginalized areas of our country, than the people who are part of this thank country. You. So they can also receive compensation thank from you. the government having I not protected them. Thank you, thank you, thank you, member for Samburu West. Dr. Yaburu. Yeah, thank you. Uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, I want to ask the CS also about uh, IDPs who are displaced but uh, could not go to the camps. Their properties were burned and they are, uh, they are some, somehow, particularly my constituency and other areas around there, a lot of people were displaced and they have lost. So do they have the statistics and are they also being included Dr. in Yaburu, these compensations which Dr. are Yaburu, being discussed? Yes. I, don't want, uh, I don't encourage uh, repetition. No, the that's issue, not repetition. The issue about, specifically about my area, Mr. Chairman. The issue, of statistics, the issue of statistics has already been raised. No, but but not about my area. They were raising about their areas. Okay, okay, okay. I think you are being unfair to me. What? Okay, I feel. I want something specific to my area. Uh, member for me, member for Imendi not. Thank you, Chair. <laughs> Madam C. S. Uh, like everybody has alluded, each and every constituency in this country probably suffered uh, IDPs. I suffered it as well in Nordimenti. How are we going to integrate the people who are in Nordimenti who cannot go back to the lands which they left in the, uh, in the areas where they have come from? How are we going to do that? Because that's a big problem as well for us. Other members, so Waziri, Waziri, Waziri in, uh, in five minutes respond to those questions. Waziri, please, the floor is yours. Thank you, Honorable Chair. The matter of IDPs is an issue that we have submitted to, I think, this committee and also other committees. Honorable Chair, the matter of IDPs is an issue that we have um, presented to various committees of the House. Um, I will try and respond to the questions uh, combined so that um, not necessarily specific because they are all related. There was a um, question on the wholesome uh, approach and whether we are looking at it from an overall perspective, and I guess that question will also respond to the question of whether we have statistics and what do we do also with the ones that are not necessarily as a result of post-election violence. And maybe as a background, Honorable Chair, I should just say that the IDPs that this Jubilee government resettled are the ones that had been profiled by the previous government under the post-election violence. So we did not do any profiling ourselves. We came and we found statistics. There was already an ongoing resettlement process. There were originally over 600,000 IDPs that had been listed then, households, and there had been various initiatives, including, if you remember, something called Rudi Nyumbani. Now, under those initiatives and the integrated IDPs, they were paid various amounts of money and others were settled in government-procured land. Now, the ones that were left that this government dealt with were 8,200 and I think 94, who were the ones that included the final lot of the Mao forest evictees. But there have been complaints after that that there are IDPs that have been left out. And of course, going back in history, there's always been IDPs in the country. This house, I think it is the last house, passed a law which um, put in, into place a mechanism for identifying IDPs, actually defines IDPs and broadens the definition beyond post-election violence and set up a board and a committee that is now chaired by Mr. Adan Wachu, who are now the ones who make the decisions on profiling mm -hmm. and also take the decisions on how much to pay and compensate. So that committee exists and it's already been working. 
The challenge, however, I have to uh, put this in perspective, honorable members, is that it is not possible for the government to take on compensation all the way from the first time anyone has ever been displaced. That's one. Two, we've always said that the compensation that is provided by the government is in no way intended to repay for equal loss because it is not possible for, for the government to pay for the loss that anybody incurred. It is not possible to quantify the displacement. So what they do is they try to provide a token financial support to enable people to restart their lives. But to say that they've had properties and therefore must compensate, if we did that analysis just for the 600,000 that have been resettled, the government will require over 300 billion shillings to do that resettlement. And you members of parliament are the ones who allocate the budget. I'm sure you would know that that would be a significant challenge.